Hey there, and welcome to episode 3 of my tutorial series for CDDA. I'm Icon, and today we're finally going to go for some real exploration with actual zombie killing. So, last episode we created ourselves a weapon. We have plundered a nice stockpile of medicine, med medical supplies, and the first thing that I want to do today is I want to read something. As you see here, we have two copies of the first aid kit instruction booklet. So capital D to drop it away, because one of them can go. We don't need two of them. So marking it with the right arrow key, pressing enter, now it's on the shelf. So reading books is capital R, and we're going to read that. And the first thing that happens is you pre-browse that book. and we will press capital R again. Now we see that book can train our skill to 1. The number in the brackets is your actual skill. We see how much fun that is and how many chapters we can read in how many minutes we need to read a chapter of that book. When you press E and you get some extra readouts about that. I'm just wondering if there's anywhere a number of the actual chapters, but I don't know. Well, it doesn't matter too much. We're pressing enter here and we're going to read until I gain a level. A level. So as you see here now, I'm starting reading now, starting reading now, and there we go. So my theoretical knowledge of healthcare is increased to level one. So let's go into the uh, player menu again, player info, add, and as you see here in my skill window, there's now blue skills and that one red skill. The red marking means that we have theoretical knowledge that has not yet transformed into practical knowledge. The gist of it is whenever you have a higher theoretical knowledge than the practical knowledge, every piece of practice you do gives you more experience points in actually learning that stuff. Or, in a shorter way, if you read a book before you train, the actual training will be worth much more learning speed. That's why I did that, because my healthcare is at a measly zero, and now every act I do towards my healthcare will give me more experience points than before. And higher skill level in healthcare just amplifies the value of these bandages. Because when we go into the apply or use item menu, small a, you can see here all these items can be applied and the bandages can be applied to wounds. So right now no limb would uh, benefit from it, so we don't do that. All right, as you can see here too, we're now thirsty and hungry. So how about eating something? Eating is capital E. And we check that out. So we see we have on our character right now bit of clean water and protein rations so short few short words about food so you see food has calories quenching value well that's for thirst beating and as you see here stuff like that protein ration has 400 calories but makes you actually thirsty and decreases your joy and it's also not really healthy that minus icon here tells you how how unhealthy it is. So overall we can understand pressing small e here to get a readout. So these are just uh, soy protein bars. That's not really tasty. What's really interesting though here is that you have a vitamin readout too. So yeah, if you don't eat healthy and varied enough in the long run, you can run into vitamin shortages and stuff like that, but more about that later. For now, we're going to eat that and drink some water until thirst and hunger are gone. So I'm going to drink a little bit more and eat a little bit more. Hunger is satisfied now. Wonderful. Okay, when you stay hungry and you don't eat anything, you will lose weight at some point because, you know, you take that, uh, you take that from somewhere. Okay, now our next step is going to be that motel. When you're looking for somewhere to plunder, when you're starting out and you're only armored badly and you're basically badly armed as well, that cudgel is okay, but it's really not much more than okay, look for 
either motels, motels are pretty good too, and or cities. Everything else is actually deadly and should be avoided under most circumstances. So we're walking now over to that motel. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to use quick walk here. W and W again, capital W. And now the game does that walking for me. Zombie spotted. So usually when you run into something aggressive, the auto walk asks you if you want to cancel auto move. Sometimes that's bugged. I've been spawned right next to deadly things, but I've already talked about that in the end of the last episode. So, zombie spotted. Capital V again. And now this is uh, showing items. If you wanted to show enemies, you just press tab after capital V. And now we see that zombies over here. I'm zooming in a bit because you sadly can zoom when you're in that uh, capital V site. And there's our first zombie. Well, zombies are by far the most harmless thing that you can fight against. Well, maybe not the most harmless, but among the most harmless things. So we're turning off safe mode now and walking closer towards that zombies. I'm zooming out a lot. This is uh, the highest zoom level. Capital Z and small, uh, small Z. One sec. Here, zoom in, zoom out. And I'm walking now closer towards these zombies until this happens. So it's a little bit hard to um, to perceive here. That red exclamation mark means he's onto me. This is what happened. This is what it looks like when an enemy knows that you're here. So now I got what I wanted and I'm starting to walk away. And as you can see, the other zombie doesn't really realize that his buddy is wandering off. And that's exactly what I want. Try to separate enemies as hard as you can. There's nothing more deadly than being swarmed by several enemies, especially more deadly the worse you are equipped. So these are pretty good circumstances. I'm just pressing 5 on the num block to wait. You can also press the uh, point button and you can also wait for several minutes, but 5 on the num block or just the... Uh, um, it called <laughs> must be this this command must have a name you know just wondering how the game is calling that command well not too important as it seems but now it got me you know anywho five on the num block or point so i'm waiting now for that dude to come get close zoom in until the enemy is very close so now we are in melee range. Fighting in this game is easy to pick up, difficult to master. You just walk into your enemy and then you do your first blow. So I lost the conduct nonviolence. Ignore that for a moment. There's a lot of achievements in that game you can go for. I quickly strike the zombie for 10 damage. Now when we examine the zombie, here's his HP bar and we see the those 10 damage were representing roughly 20% of the total HP. So you get the idea what that means. So let's repeat that. And as you see here, I'm landing blow after blow after blow. And the zombie is not even retaliating. That's because he's stunned. That's the cool thing about Eskrima. You can use stunning blows with that technique and totally devastate a simple zombie. I really like that one. So after the zombie's dead, you see here again, there's this yellow exclamation mark. So small s to smash nearby terrain and pull that zombie. Otherwise he will get up in a day or so. So always check out what's the loot there. And oh my God, we got lucky. So the first thing this dude dropped was a hammer. Hammers, crowbars, multi-tools. All these every day, these uh, crafting and uh, and otherwise utility heavy items are extremely valuable, and we're going to pick that dude up here. So as you see here, it's just so fitting in my inventory. Volume wise, it's okay, but sometimes stuff uh, your your inventory goes red if you pick up something like that. If that happens, you should not uh, try to pick it up because it's definitely going gonna go into your hands. But we're going to pick up that hammer because you see this item has lots of tool qualities. 
Whenever you are insecure about something, check out its tool qualities. Level 3 hammering quality. Everything above level 2 in terms of qualities is magnificent. The higher they go, the better. Butchering is a little bit off. Butchering features very high numbers. But a hammer is offering us nail prying qualities, fine hammering qualities. That's just awesome. Good stuff. So there's also a grape drink on that zombie and lots of filthy clothing. Remember that I picked the squeamish trait on my character? That means he can't wear filthy clothing. Without that trait, I could pick up everything from that zombie and just wear it. But filthy clothing has a chance to infect you when you get wounded. Basically, you know, the, the dirt from the clothing seeps into your wound. So clean those clothes. It's always better. I'm gonna teach you how later down the road, but now let's take down the next zombie. Just the same procedure as before, waiting until it gets close. I don't like to uh, rush towards my enemies, and I also like to zoom in to the fight whenever I go close, just personal things. So in this scenario, for example, the zombie stepped away from me. Don't follow them. It's really nasty when you do so, they grab you or attack you. Just wait another turn until they get close again. And now, I get grabbed. This is a special attack the zombies can use. It lowers your defense, you can dodge worse, and it's gonna be easier for the enemy to hit you afterwards. You can break out of a grab by just walking away from the zombie. Also a step north or west, west would also count as breaking the grab. And well, most of the time, if the enemy's HP looks like that, I just keep attacking. If the enemy manages, manages to grab me at the beginning of a fight, and I'm not sure that I'm going to kill him with one or two blows, it's worth breaking the grab. The, the ideal decision lies somewhere in between, and it's up to you to decide that, because it really strongly depends on your character, your gear, your strength, the enemy you're up against, because, you know, breaking the grab of a zombie is way easier than breaking the grab of a stronger zombie, for example. There's tough zombies outside there. Okay, let's finish that dude, because I felt like that grab didn't really impress me. Pulp that body, and let's get going. So, zombies drop quite often wallets. Let's pick up a wallet. So, examining it in our inventory shows that... Page down and page up, by the way, help you to browse through that window. It shows us that in this uh, wallet there's a condom, a scorecard, cash cards, a couple of pennies and dimes. These items are virtually useless and at the same time not. So, in this game you can go into, a, into real messy mode. And like I mentioned in the episode before, just pick up stuff you really know that you want. Stuff in wallets, I'm, ex I'm I'm mentioning wallets out of the reason that I really enjoy the items in there. Wallets and contain condoms, which you can actually use as uh, fluid containers for massive size, just easy to destroy. And also money is used by vending machines. You can buy post-apocalyptic snacks and soda cans with that money. Let's get going. A motel, by the way, is one of the easiest locations to attack. There's always a couple of zombies at a motel, they're pretty normal, and it's always a very modest amount and danger rating of zombies. So this time we got grabbed while the zombie is pretty high HP, so I'm walking away, breaking out of the grab. Got lucky. And now let's keep going. Keep an eye out on the movement of the zombies because they really love to dodge and kite a little bit around to punish you for for not being not for not paying attention. So I search every zombie, and as we see here, it also carried a handheld game system. The battery of that is really low, so I'm not too interested, but there's a thing that I want to show you right directly there. If you press capital U for unloading stuff, we can unload this handheld game system right on the scratch there and pick up that light disposable battery. The same goes for the wallet there, capital U, and we can unload that wallet as well in case you want these items. 
because the items out of a wall it can be used for crafting too but we're going to cover that all these things in the series i just uh, like to give pointers here and there so now we're proceeding through that motel as you see the easiest way is just to get close enough until one of the zombies goes acro on you clobber him down and keep going so over here is going to be our first zombie child zombie childs are really nasty they are weaker than the regular zombie but they dodge a lot better so most of the time i've had more i've suffered more damage from zombie child children than from any other type of zombie so gummy candies on that dude and here's a, a vehicle so a vehicle can be under some circumstances be used for yourself we're going to talk about vehicles if after we've conquered the motel i think i think that's a good moment so i'll go over there so as you can see here the there's a larger amount of zombies up ahead and three of them have already uh, seen me this is now a pretty dangerous situation and i'm just waiting here for a moment until they get more close so when there are several zombies on you there's multiple things that you can do I'm going to go for the most simple strategy now that's pulling them apart so since zombies are essentially slower than you if you aren't wounded that is you can't just keep running and now you see third zombie is losing connection to the others and now it's only two zombies two zombies i know i can't fight so let's wait for that one and this is basically the a good distance between two zombies with that build you have to find out how quickly your character takes down zombies to find the ideal spacing. So now we got that, and now I start attacking that dude. And as you see, I got the first one down before the second one even got close. So we got grabbed, let's check out the HP. I'll keep attacking there. And here we go. Pulping them dudes with small S, and well, some food and a permanent marker well right now i'm not interested in that and there's bullets these uh things here are bullets and i strongly recommend you to pick up practically all bullets that you can't find ammo for firearms is quite rare in the early game and firearms are extremely powerful so there's another grab and I'll just keep attacking, even though I'm grabbed, to show you what happens there. So I got a bite on my head. As we see here, the HP on the head have been lowered a tiny little bit. And everything is okay. You can't just keep attacking. And there we go. So this way, we're going to cleanse our way through that motel. And don't be shy to kite a ton. Also, what have, helps a lot is to kite your enemies through terrain like this. I'll show you in a sec what I mean. Taking down that Zombo first. So, when you check out terrain like that, forest, move cost 150. Dead grass, oh, what is that? Long grass, move cost 150. Dead grass, 100. Road, 100. Tall grass, 250. So you get the idea. Kiting your enemies through these areas there makes them move more slowly than you. And this way you can control their movement a lot better. There's a baseball bat. If you aren't a Eskrima user, baseball bats make excellent early game weapons. Like among the best that you can't find early on. But since we're using Eskrima and the baseball bat is not compatible to that, I'll stick with the cudgel. If you are using a fighting style, rely on that as much as you can. A lot of vehicles here, so good stuff for a little bit of a beginner's vehicle tutorial later on. Now, first off, we need to cleanse our enemies here, and there's our first different type of zombie, the wet zombie. It's a water-based zombie. They love to spawn in the vicinity of pools, and they are not really that much more dangerous than your regular zombie. There's not really much more to say about them. I consider them a little bit more tanky than the regular zombie, but that's basically about it. 
Their biggest quality is that they move silently and hidden through water. But on land, they're pretty much equally harmless as this dude here. So just searching here, a little bit of ammo. Always good to pick up that ammo. And we're slowly getting through that motel complex here. So south of us, there's two more zombies. Three zombies. But, well... Okay, now you see we're, we're being followed by five zombies. That's that's a lot. And one of them is right next to me. So I got grabbed immediately. And I, I broke not out of that grab. So I'm trying that again. If your character has a uh, really low strength, you probably should not try to try uh, to go out of grabs. So this, by the way, is horrible. I'm grabbed and surrounded by two enemies. This is among the worst things that can happen. Right now, I'll just keep fighting that dude because I know he's going to go down very, very soon. And the other dude is grabbing too. If you try to break out of the grab of two zombies at once, stuff is going to be really, really bad. Checking out my HP here, you see we're slowly losing some HP, but that's not too terrible. The right color, the the light red color here on the arm depicts that we're bleeding. So if I go into the player info menu at key, I can see here I have a minor bleeding at the right arm. So I want to break out of that grab again and keep clobbering. I don't want to uh, stick in grabs if I can avoid that. So here's the first fad zombie, and as you see here, he's taking a lot less damage. That's because a fad zombie is particularly well armored against blunt damage. And if you check out the cudgel, the cudgel is only blunt damage, so... They are armored by fad. Decayed zombies are actually even worse than their regular zombie brethren. A little bit of a downgraded version of a regular zombie, as far as I know. I don't know if they are more infectious than the other people, but... Well. Okay, we now go over and pop them dudes. And let's start looting. Let's see, is there anything that I want to have? A couple of aspirin joints. Well, I do love to stockpile drugs. Because everything that makes your character happy can be valuable. Look at all us here. How lucky. Antibiotics. And the other items, I'll just leave them here for now. There's so much stuff I could explain right now, but one thing at a time. So, with that out of the equation, you see most of the enemies are now gone. We've took a little bit of damage. As you see, the bleeding on the right arm has already stopped. Bleedings really stop very quickly, usually, unless it's a... It's a deep red. Like, this light red is usually only depicting a, a small bleeding that doesn't uh, endanger you too much. And 90% of the time, I just wait until it's over. So, before I go looting this place, I'm now walking around and searching for remaining zombies. Because I don't want to be surprised by anything or anybody here. But it looks like we, we got that motel cleansed. Wonderful. For some reason, there's a sheet of glass on the floor. Crazy. Okay. So, let's plunder that motel. Over here, there is a backpack. Backpacks are your among the best things that you can find. Because we are wearing right now... This was the small eye inventory. We're wearing right now a messenger bag, which is... Well, you know, if you check it out with a small e... The messenger bag can store total capacity, 15 liters, and a weight of 18 kilo. And here's the uh, stats of that. And if you now check out the backpack, let's pick up the backpack and examine it. Volume 25 liters, weight 30 kilo. So there's a lot more we can do there. Just keep in mind that every piece of clothing you put on has a intrinsic encumbrance. And the encumbrance of a backpack increases when it's filling. It also gives you some protection from dashing, cutting, and ballistic damage. So there's an upside to that. The messenger bag, as you see here, is encumbering a lot less than the backpack. But we're, just, we're still going to 
exchange that with a backpack. So wear item is a capital W, I'm going for that. And now I don't want to have a messenger bag and a backpack in my inventory. So capital D to drop that messenger bag on the floor, capital U to unload it afterwards because the items in there I still want to keep. So now what has happened is I dropped that pocket on the ground and with the unload command, I put the items out of that pocket back into my inventory. I'm now picking, re-picking up that messenger bag because, you know, pockets are valuable. Let's keep that for now. So over there, we find a Belvedere roadmap and tourist guide. Roadmaps and tourist guides are basically always available at motels. That's just, it makes sense, you know. Most motels give you an information about the environment. So we pick those up. And unlike the uh, instinct told me, these items can't be read not with a capital R. They need to be activated with the apply menu, small a. And here we can activate the Belvedere roadmap and the Belvedere tourist guide. So I want to show you how they work. So check out the map now and let's activate the roadmap and check out the map afterwards. So we don't know many things about this area but we know now that a major big town called Belvedere is in this direction to be found and now we activate the other thing the tourist guide and now we have unlocked other points of interest restaurants police station bank all things that could be interesting for a tourist so this is this is lovely and i really like how these items work so we also have discovered the township of harpswell so we have now a couple of goals to strive for so belvedere would be a good area to go for so let's see what we can do here and also there's the vending machines i was talking about they're all broken though so let's see uh that means i can't I can't work with them anymore. Sometimes they are still working and accept your money. It's sad. Well, let's start plundering that motel. Plundering bigger complexes in this game is a lot of fun. And it's something you will do a lot. So we're going to check out all the items here we can find. And check out if there's anything in the rooms that we want. Here we have a locked door. You have several ways how to deal with locked doors. First off try to press just E and wait a sec um I don't think that this is what I wanted let's see let's okay for some reason the... I had a very weird readout the game told me that I was trying to pry open the door with my backpack that's nonsense it used the uh, hammer in my backpack so I attempt to pry open the closed wood door using my hammer not sufficient there's not su no sufficient leverage on the hammer. This means that the prying quality of this tool is not high enough. We're going to re-equip the cudgel. Stop wielding hammer. Yes, I want to store it in my inventory. So the other thing you can do... Well, uh, you know what? Now we're going to do it. Mm, yeah, I'm going to wield that hammer. Wielding hammer. And now I use the smash command. Small s. Take down that door. So I didn't do that with the cudgel because I didn't want that my cudgel got damaged by doing so. You know, it's my main weapon. I don't want my main weapon to be damaged unnecessarily. So here we got a book under the hood, advanced mechanics manual. Books are items I basically always pick up. And now we can go upstairs here and as we can see there's a little bit of a survivor's camp here. Some potato chips, some ganja, and some instant coffee. I'm picking up those. And beyond that, nothing really. So we're now one height uh, level above everything. And you can still see the environment. A little bit pixelated now. But it's still the same road, pool. It just doesn't inherit the tiles, sadly. But if you press now M for the map, you can also see the map from a different height level. So if you go page down, button page down, 
or page up. There's level, several um, height levels. You can also go page down and see underground levels. Pretty useful. Another thing which should be noted, whenever you go upstairs on a rooftop or something, you start uncovering larger areas of the environment. So all this hasn't been uncovered before. I uncovered that by going up to the roof. And there's an unusual stone barn there. Okay. Stuff like that can be very, very deadly. So go there on your own risk. A blazer. So another thing we're going for we're we're working on now, and that's kind of like something we're we're transitioning into into the next episode, is we need armor and we need gear. We need to protect ourselves. Because one of the most important things you want to do early on is negate as much damage from the enemies as possible while they're fighting you and therefore we're trying to find good gear so a blazer here's the thing they have a coverage and a layer and the game works like that it does just allow you to stack one trillion items on top of each other so basically i could wear five t-shirts above another and that would work but i would get more and more encumbered the more i wear above one body part so what's uh, here what's a good thing to go for is this menu here hidden behind the plus key for relayering armor and clothing this looks like that over here uh, you get a really good readout about what's covering which part of your body and what you're actually wearing right now. I, I find that one of the most informational readouts there. And if we check this out, for example, I'm wearing a boxer shorts and the jeans above that. The game also gives you the option to, I think it was uh, capital S, sword armor into natural layer order. So with a capital S, you can make sure that your boxer shorts are below your pants. So things. Well, we're going to pick up the blazer and wear it and get back into the armor layering menu now. So you see, we have now a long sleeve shirt and a blazer on top of another. The, they feature some encumbrance points, but that's, that's pretty much worth it. If you go into the player info menu, you can see the encumbrance on your body parts. Pressing tab, by the way, lets you swap between these windows. So here we go. Oh, sorry guys, I just realized that while I was talking about the healthcare in the beginning of the video that was completely invisible there. Whoopsie. Well, okay. The text here is light red. Sorry, totally forgot. Okay, but what I was talking about here is here. The encumbrance, we can't check it out. We are suffering slight disadvantages on these rolls, but nothing too terrible. Okay, so by the way, when there's a locked door and windows right next to that, I like to smash the windows instead of the door. This does create a lot of noise and you should always smash twice. Like if you only smash once, the window looks like that. And that's pretty, uh, pretty, a pretty bad idea to go through that. Well, motels usually have very low loot. You don't find too many items in the in the rooms. They are a very good source for blankets and a very good um, source for road maps. Also, you can use the motel as a pretty safe haven to camp early on. I personally would try to uh, go for one of these rooms that I can still lock or something like that. I think the first room. Oh, from the east, I hear a wunk. So. There's been another zombie hit. closed in there, so you're never uh, you're never secure from that. And here I see there's a motorcycle armor in there. Well, that's really not bad, but it's very damaged, so I'm not too interested in that. If it would have been a little bit less damaged, I would have been a taker, but not in these circumstances. So another zombie in the closet, and. Well, a lighter. I really like to pick up lighters. Electronic cigarette, why not? Because they offer me a 
more sustainable via source than the matchbook. Okay, so that's that for today. We're going to explore other things in the next episode. The basic usage of vehicles, and I don't know what's going to be next, but what I know for sure is we're going to try to explore Belvedere a little bit more in the next episode, most likely. All right, thanks for watching. Drop me your comments down below. Leave a thumbs up on that video if you enjoyed. And of course, if there are any questions, just ask away. And check out my channel, daily videos happening there. Just press the subscribe button and you won't miss anything there. See you soon. Bye-bye.